Thank you very much. So, um, hi everyone, and Yvette, and I would really, really like to thank you and the organizer, uh, uh, to thank you and the organizer for giving us the uh, opportunity to present at this incredible uh, conference. So uh, our talk of today will be based on the paper Distributional Semantics for uh, Neolatin, a paper that we uh, co-authored uh, together with Jelke Blum, Martin Reinert and Arianna Betti from the Concept in Motion team at the University of Amsterdam. Uh, today, we will also present our advances on uh, evaluation methods for distributional semantics. So, um, uh, specifically, uh, we will first briefly introduce the details of uh, the study case we used in our paper. Then we will uh, mention the challenges of constructing distributional semantic models for our Neolatin uh, test case. And after this, uh, we will give an, intro uh, an overview of uh, two um, initial tasks to test distributional semantic model and discuss uh, the results. Then based on this, we will motivate the need for grounded evaluation and give uh, an example of how to build a grounded evaluation data set or uh, a ground uh, truth. So um, as probably clear from the title, uh, the aim of our paper was to construct and evaluate distributional semantics models for Neolatin. So distributional semantic models are NLP models based on the hypothesis that words with similar meanings uh, occur in similar context. Um, this paper uh, grew out as a side project from a much larger philosophical um, project about tracing Wolf's ideas on mathematical method in the 18th century Germany. While working on the larger project, uh, we realized that um, the corpus we were working with had specific characteristic, making it a deeply interesting case to test distributional semantic models. Uh, and since uh, there is no high quality machine readable version of the larger corpus, we're working on that, uh, we decided to build a tiny manually type data set of Neolatin sentences. As uh, I'm sure many of you uh, already know, dealing with such an inflected language as Latin can be quite challenging. It is not for nothing that they started to call it historical language processing. And also we are dealing with an ancient language that has evolved, has been used, and has incorporated word from other languages for more than two millennia. So for example, Neolatin includes terms that do not appear in classical Latin. Think about uh, analyticus or syntheticus. Another challenge is that applying distributional semantics models to Latin mean, means to work with smaller data set than usual in distributional semantics, and even more so in domain specific applications such as philosophy. Finally, some standard methods to evaluate distributional semantic model are quite unavailable for this type of cases. Large gold standard of word similarity scores for Neolatin are still quite scarce and would also be quite problematic for a domain specific ap application um, due, for example, to different meaning of words in specific domains. So let's take uh, a look at our data set. So, uh, because we are working with tiny data, in our test case, we decided to test the performance of a method that is specifically designed for constructing distributional semantic models of tiny data called Non-Stuvec, which was created by Aurelie Berlot and Marco Baroni. So, Non-Stuvec is designed to learn from a single or a few definitional sentences. Therefore, we constructed a data set that consists of 90 definitional sentences for 30 target terms. 
This forms a tiny but sufficient set of data to test consistency in the second task that we will discuss in the next, in the next slide. For example, for the target term axiomata, we have three sentences in which the target term has been replaced by three underscores. Look at snippet two, for example, we have the sentence que enim immediate ex definiciones flunt propositiones si teoretiche sunt mm, 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 si practiche postulata vocantur. So we have designed two tasks to evaluate performance of non stufec on uh, Latin data. And the first task, uh, task re replicates Herbolo and Baroni's original experiment that they did with, an English, with the English definitional data set from Wikipedia. In this experiment, uh, the vectors are constructed by non stufec on the basis of a single definitional sentence and are then compared to the vectors of word stufec which is another method for constructing vectors that has shown uh, to be less accurate for terms with lower frequencies or small data in general. So for this, we build a data set of terms and their definitional sentence from Wikipedia. We compare the vectors constructed by non stufec based on these defini uh, definitional sentences to the vectors of word stufec constructed over the whole of Wikipedia. And then the idea is that if non stufec performs well, it will learn the definitional sentence um, a vector that is close to the Wikipedia vector. So the word stufec model in this task is used as a kind of uh, baseline. And then uh, in our second task, we evaluate by applying an intrinsic evaluation method to non stufec vectors trained on the tiny uh, data set of Neo-Latin sentences as mentioned in our uh, previous slide. And since as said, we do not have the entire corpus that this tiny data set was lifted from, we cannot perform the same evaluation as the one in our first task. But then to still get an idea of the quality of the non stufec vectors, uh, we measure vector consistency. Vector consistency is a, is a metric based on the similarity between vectors of the same word trained over different samples of text. The idea is that in a homogeneous corpus, similarity between these vectors should be high. So have a, let's have a brief look at uh, the results of these two tasks. The first task shows that non stufec learns word embeddings from our Neo-Latin data set slightly less well than for English. So this is compared to the results that Herbolo and Baronis uh, uh, had on the English Wikipedia data set. This difference in performance might be due to the inflected nature of the language. Uh, and then the second task shows that consistent word embeddings can be learned from our tiny Neo-Latin data set by non -Civec. So factors for the same word learned over different parts of our tiny corpus are similar to each other. So far, so good. Now let's uh, consider how we should and can interpret these results. So after these two evaluations, do we now know that um, we can apply non stufec in so-called downstream applications, meaning real research tasks? Well, first of all, the results we got on these two experiments are not bad, but they're also not great. So it depends on the application. If we, one wants to uh, just explore the data set a bit, very high accuracy might not be necessary. But at this stage, I would advise against deriving any real conclusions from the output of these non stufec models. Second, and then that's more general, um, Recent research has shown that good performance on one task does not necessarily guarantee good performance on another. And the same goes for corpora. The results on the Wikipedia uh, definitional data set do not necessarily generalize to our other uh, Neo-Latin data, not in the least because the latter is don domain specific. Then uh, concerning our domain specific data set evaluation, 
uh, the consistency measure. While this metric shows that the embeddings are consistent, this doesn't tell us anything about whether the embeddings are consistently good or consistently bad representations of our data. So what does this tell us? Uh, this shows us that while initial results give us some hope, further evaluation is definitely needed. What we propose um, for further evaluation is what we call grounded evaluation, meaning evaluation that is task specific as well as data set specific. And this type of evaluation heavily relies on domain specific knowledge that an expert has of the data. Because in order to actually distinguish the consistently good from the consistently bad, one needs to know what a good representation of the data really is. And most of the time, this is not a trivial task at all. And it requires identifying extremely subtle differences uh, in meaning or details. For example, um, while some of the terms in philosophy are known to have a, a radically distinct meaning, um, think of abduction as the kind with possible alien involvement or in philosophy, the logical inference kind. Um, but many of many philosophical terms are just used in a more specific and technical way than their common natural language usage. Think of the word uh, meaning itself. So the method we propose for further evaluation uses a standard defined by the expert prior to seeing the output of the models. This is because by just checking the results, one might be unknowingly biased or blindsided by just seeing a few good outcomes. So uh, we now give you an example of grounded evaluation for a specific computational task. Here, the computational task we are taking into account aims to retrieve passages that are relevant to the meaning of a given term that appears in the corpus. So how do we evaluate this task? Ideally, we annotate all paragraphs in the corpus on the basis of their relevance to the term. But practically, this is often not feasible because it could require to annotate tens of thousands of passages and would therefore be very time consuming. With our method, we aim to identify a possibly relevant subset of all passages and annotate just those passages. To do so, we will show a six step procedure that has been developed by Betty et al. and that combines qualitative, quantitative, and computational techniques, and that it is based on domain expert knowledge. So, uh, step one consists of formulating an initial research question and in articulating a model to study the concept of, of interest. For example, here we focus on a, a specific philosophical context, namely 18th century Germany philosophy of science, and we are interested in investigating whether axioms are grounded in definitions, meaning that definitions provide the explanation for or justify axioms. In step two, then we turn the research question into a question that can be answered successfully by querying for terms or paragraphs. This step includes the formulation of a multiple term of multiple term lists, uh, one for each term in the term based research question. So, for example, in the term list of axioma, we also find principe. In the term list of definitio, we will find also essenzi. In the term list of deductio, we find also flu, proba, and so on. In step three, we check all the way in which uh, these terms expand in the corpus and distinguish the relevant expansion from the irrelevant ones. For example, we will discard the expansion flumen uh, as it is not relevant for our research question, 
but we will keep the expansion flow instead as we are interested in passages in which axiom derived from or fluent X definitions. Now, on the basis of our uh, term lists, in step four, we will retrieve all passages with, for instance, either at least a term from one of the lists or a term from each of the lists. The aim here is to come up with a manageable amount of relevant data to be annotated. Step five consists in annotating the paragraphs by relevance to the research question. For instance, on a zero, one, or minus one to one scale. So now we have the uh, imagine two retrieved uh, sentences and one sentence is que enemy mediate ex definizione fluent proposizione si teoretiche sunt axiomata si practiche postulata vocantur. Another possible sentence is alta definizio vel planiter televisio alta definizione visa est uno ex modin televisionem signis mittendis et genus televisionis digitalis in quo nunc qualitas imagine, imaginum optime videtur. Now, uh, both of these, in both of these passages, um, there is the term definitions, but while the first passage is relevant to our research question as it provides evidence for the fact that axioms are grounded in definition. The second passage is not relevant at all since it's about HDTV. So the resulting annotation data set is a corpus dependent and concept modeling ground truth specific to the task and the data. And because the annotation data set does not cover the entire corpus, when used to calculate standard performance measures such as precision and recall, one needs to choose uh, how to deal with the paragraphs that were not annotated. And the hypothesis is that by using this method, uh, this six step procedure, you will have annotated close to all relevant passages. Um, so all paragraphs that are not annotated can be counted as a no hit or irrelevant. However, um, because you have no guarantee of actually having annotated all relevant passages, these ground truths can only be used to compare models to each other, uh, but not to compare to other measures. And comparing models can then, for instance, be done by calculating the cosine similarities which is used as a measure for uh, semantic similarity. And then calculating precision and recall over the top 10, top 100 and 500 results. Um, so we have shown a method for evaluating the performance of a model on a specific task. Note that this method for evaluation is not intended to uh, replace other evaluation methods. Model uh, qualities such as consistency are important to test as a baseline if the, because if the model performs bad, badly on these metrics, even though it is tested over a homogeneous uh, data, and even though the results on the grounded evaluation are fine, um, the model is unreliable and likely to show mixed results on other evaluations. So the example of grounded um, evaluation that we have sh uh, shown is made to test performance on a paragraph retrieval task based on term search. Note that grounded evaluation is not limited to this type of task. To test, for instance, the retrieval of related or similar terms based on a term search, one could define a conceptual network of terms with their interrelations. So in the case of our Neo-Latin corpus, the domain expert identified that uh, definitio, definition, definition and uh, axioma, axiom are functional synonym of principium, principle. Similar to the other task, 
to the other task to uh, successfully complete this task, the cosine distance of the vector of a given target term has to be near to the vectors of their functional synonyms than in alternative terms. Uh, meaning in the case of principium, definitio, and axioma, the cosine distance of the vectors of this term are expected to be near to each other than to other terms. Most of the evaluation metrics mentioned give us a single or a few numbers as output that then represent the level of performance on this task. So this brings up the natural question, when are results good enough? Um, I intentionally put this in quotation marks because it's impossible to just give a numerical answer to this question. Since the level of performance needed is dependent on how one wants to use the method. For instance, uh, consider the case in which a researcher is using the method to just simply um, explore the data, looking for new passages relevant to a single passage. Um, the recall of this method uh, for this application need not be very high, meaning that the percentage of the relevant passages that it retrieves doesn't have to be very high. As long as the researcher identifies some new uh, relevant passages without being overloaded with irrelevant ones, this would be the precision of the method, and the selection is not biased towards a specific interpretation, the distributional semantic models would enrich, uh, enrich the research. Uh, on the other hand, for testing specific hypotheses, the required accuracy is higher. Uh, the model should at least um, no longer make any clear mistakes. In any case, an inspection of the output beyond just the scores would be necessary. So eventually, when this level of accuracy are reached, in our use case, we aim to expand beyond single language uh, models to multilingual uh, distributional semantic models. Uh, our original large corpus from which the tiny Neo-Latin corpus was lifted consists of Neo-Latin and German texts on roughly the same topics and concepts. However, the different languages, of course, use different terms to refer to the same concept. And multilingual models could potentially map words with the same meaning to each other. Dream big, right? Um, so uh, we hope that uh, we gave our contribution here to promote a fruitful collaboration between philosophy and computational linguistics. We strongly believe that the expert constructed ground truths provide the evaluation method for sound and re reliable application of distributional semantics methods, not only in philosophy, but in the humanities more broadly. In this presentation, we have shown an example of such ground truth. And in further research, we aim to explore the applicability of these distributional semantic methods to Neo-Latin data by these expert constructed ground truths. Um, this will show what further developments of distributional semantics method corpora or text mining might be needed for quality representation of Neolatin data.